It was an absolutely wonderful event. When we were finished with it, I wished that every single Democrat in Iowa could have been there. This Democratic Party of 2009 is an historic Democratic Party. It's not just a Democratic Party. It's not just another state party. It is an historic party. You know, it was a really great party for getting the band back together. Um, those of us that were there at the beginning, what we've done, the registration shift, the incredible role that we played in the election of this president. We have something special going here, folks. Something historic. All across the state and nation, people have put their faith in Democrats in ways they've not seen in 45 years. You all in this room help make it so. Behind every election, there's a long victory march. A phone calls made, doors knock, lit mail, and a hope of a better future acted out in living rooms all over Iowa. What they may not see is the grassroots and the backbone of our party. Those that dedicate their time as state central committee members and county party chairs giving countless of hours to work. To them tonight, I say thank you very much. So with that, it gives me a great deal of pleasure. At this time, it is my great honor to introduce, to induct into the Iowa Democratic Party Hall of Fame, First Lady Christy Vilsack, Lieutenant Governor Sally Peterson, the United States Secretary of Agriculture, my friend and your friend. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join me in welcoming to the stage one of Iowa's most accomplished and inspirational leaders, Thomas J. Vilsack. Another way to sum up all of her achievements is to say that Christy has worn a lot of different hats. You have been our extended family for these many, many years, and it feels like coming home to, uh, to share this honor with you is, is really, really special for me. And the great thing about having an extended family is that every once in a while you get to get together and you get to think about old times and share those memories but we also have an obligation to the next generation to share our experiences. So it would be a pity. Um, Sally Peterson and my husband and I have had just about every experience you could possibly have in policy and politics. While some of those stories are, uh, you've heard maybe some of them, some of them maybe you haven't. And I think it's really important that as, and I'm looking out at you, the leaders of the future, uh, that you don't forget to basically ask us for those stories and ask us for the experience that we've had because I think all of us would be glad to share that with you. During the campaign of 98, we're doing these small town gatherings, trying to reach out to all the rural communities and trying to keep the numbers down, Governor, you know, getting to do well in the city, do well in the suburbs, keep the numbers down in small towns. So we're sort of looking around the map and we, we've got Northeast Iowa covered. There's no problem going to the small towns in Northeast Iowa. There are lots of Democrats there. Southeast Iowa, my home area, no problem there, walking the streets. Yeah, Northwest Iowa, a <laughs> little tougher. But we were making inroads there. We, you know, we had, uh, we had folks willing to do that, but then we, then we got to this town called Shenandoah. <laughs> Page County. And, uh, and, and, and Sally Peterson, as great as she was, said, I'm not going to. <laughs> Walk by Nancy Lightfoot's store, that's just not going to work. I said to Catch, I said, I'm not going down there. I'll never come out of there alive. Christy says, I'll go. She walked right down Main Street in Shenandoah. She shook hands. We got like 29% out of Shenandoah, but most Democrats get about 15%. So, I, you know, Christy got us about 14% higher in Shenandoah. And, um, And in part, we were able to win re-election was all of those libraries that Christie went to, all those baked goods she ate, all of those people she met. They remembered that. They understood that this was an administration that cared. And uh, I will live a long, long life and do everything she asks me to do between now and the time I leave this earth, and I will never, ever be able to repay her. I will have to live ten lives to be able to do that. I've, I've told this story a couple of times. We're in the throes of this campaign and we, we don't have any money for payroll. 
What are you laughing about, Governor? You never had that problem. <laughs> so, well, it's not going to look very good if we have to shut the office and lay people off. So Sally comes bounding in in the morning. She's chipper. This is a woman, by the way, that has never, I, I worked with her for nine years. She's never had a bad day. She's never had a down day. She's never been pessimistic about anything. And I said, Sally, we're, we're out of money. Uh, no one's taking my calls. This is a tough situation. She says, no problem. She said, how much do we need? I said, we need $10,000. So she said, uh, well, I'll call Norm. I said, Norman who? She said, Norman Lear. I said, for sure. You just go right ahead. <laughs> Here's the phone. Pick it up. Give old Norman a call and have him send us by Federal Express $10,000. <laughs> she said, fine. She dialed the number. She didn't have to look it up. She put it on speakerphone. Norman Lear gets on the phone. Hey, Sally, how's Jim? How's Ronald? It was like old home week. And I thought, my God, this woman does know Norman Lear. <laughs> <clears throat> he said, what can I do for you? She said, we're a little short on cash. How much do you need? $10,000. No problem. I'll Federal Express it to you. <laughs> I would not have had the privilege and the honor of being governor for eight years were it not for Sally Peters. What are the odds that a guy from Pittsburgh, whose name sounds like a pickle, who ran on the campaign slogan, it's time to rotate the crops, and focused on making Iowa the food capital of the world, would now be the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture. Tom Vilsack and Sally Peterson's election re-energized in a way that nothing else could have done. To break that 30-year drought was so psychologically significant. I really think it was part of what began this, this re rebirth and reimagining of the Iowa Democratic Party. I watched Tom Vilsack first define the word hope for every Democrat in Iowa and many across the nation as he battled his way back from a 30-point deficit. What I didn't realize at the time was that little known state senator would define the word hope for every Democrat by refusing to have the fear of losing, by being bold and saying that as Iowa Democrats, yes we can. It was a psychological barrier and once it was broken, then really we never did give up. And once it was broken, we all had a living memory, not a memory that was handed down to us from, you know, the foremothers and forefathers of this movement, a real memory of how to do it. Tonight is a recognition of their leadership and a humble thank you for the opportunities that you have provided all of us here. So Mr. Secretary, Christy, Sally, thank you very much. I'm honored. I'm honored uh, to be in the same Hall of Fame as Christy Vilsack and Sally Peterson. <laughs> I'm honored that you are here tonight, but I am, to be candid, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm far more honored by the title Iowa Democrat than any other title you could bestow on me tonight. Thank you and God bless you.